Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mystics of Texas. We're talking about trust today. It seems like a, an easy word. We all understand what trust means, we think. But it is one of the threads that hold society, friendships, every action of our life, every thought that we have concerning religion, politics, finances, our health, everything revolves around trust. And it's something that's really unbelievable. It is probably like several of our videos and messages have been lately, it pisses off a lot of people. And I'm okay with that because I think it's really important to stir up our emotions in order to find the truth for ourselves individually. Whatever that happens to mean to you, and especially when these things are in front of us. And a lot of us are jaded. A lot of us don't trust. A lot of us don't trust anything, and we're lying to ourselves when we believe certain BS. You know, we got a lot of religious texts from Christians, Buddhists, I mean, every, all of them. And a lot of them have contradictory things, but if you, you're told to believe that, we're told to believe that our food is safe. We're told to believe that, you know, GMOs are good for us. We're told to believe, oh, take this pill for this. No, don't worry about the side effects. We're told to trust whatever denomination you are, whatever. We're told to trust that our house paint is healthy, our clothes are good, our cars are fine, our blankets, our water, our governments, they're all poisoning us. Like there's a lot of poison in the world. And we should be aware of it so we're not just lying to ourselves all the time. Because we are. We're told that, you know, words don't have meaning. We can change them. We're told that we should believe that. We're told that somehow energy and matter just appear from nothing. That the truth to life and the soul, we should trust authorities in special places instead of looking inward. I think that's a big mistake. And we're going to explore a lot of that today. And I think we can all feel like there are dark forces all around us. I think that, at least I do, I feel like, well, I don't feel like it. I know for a fact that we're, we've been lied to about so many things in our life and we've had personal experiences in our relationships where people have let us down. They've lied to us, whether it's your wife, your kids, your friends, your broader circle, your preacher, your pastor, your politicians, whatever it is we are having a massive lack of trust in the world. And it's a problem. And it even becomes a bigger problem whenever we're lied to by big agriculture, big business, big pharma, big government. I think it starts to become us numb. And that is a, a dark force. Because we shouldn't be numb. We should have the joy and happiness whenever Andrew or Steve, Dean, I mean, all you guys and girls I mean, most all of us had a big, warm hug. Like, I'm a big fan of hugs, and I like talking about hugs all the time because they make everybody feel better, especially whenever you know you're coming from a place of good intent. I don't need to hug any of y'all, but I want to because, well, ultimately, I guess I do need to. You know, ultimately, I guess I do need to. We're told that, you know, the science is uh, settled. The science is settled on this, or science is settled on that. Man, science has never settled. Uh, but we're told to believe that. We're told to believe just to put our own intelligence on a shelf and let everybody else tell us what to believe. Instead of just looking for ourselves. Our thoughts and emotions are literally being stolen from us. And I think we can stop it, and I think we should stop it. So let's get ready to be just somewhat offended. Uh, we are, there's some religious radicals in the world. I don't know if y'all have noticed that from jihadists to fundamental everything. <laughs> it's uh, kind of crazy. But in this country, we're fundamentally Christian. Um, any other place in the world looking at the United States would say, yes, the United States is a Christian nation. Turn the other cheek is the philosophy do unto others as they would do unto you. Another, Pinocchio. It's a big lie. We're the biggest warmongers in the world. We're the biggest arm dealers in the world. We 
celebrate young, beautiful, brave kids going out in the name of freedom to die and to murder and to kill people. We do it everywhere. But we're supposed to be the ones with a big heart and turn the other cheek. I find it offensive. I find it hypocritical. And we get numbed. We get numbed and irritated. For the past 19th, 20th, and this 21st centuries, this Islamic extremist fundamental jihadist movement, um, it's kind of hard not to understand why they are that way. We're the ones, we, the West, we drew all the lines for their borders. We created their countries. And they believe if we don't believe in the oneness of their God, they need to get rid of us by the sword. That's their own prophet's words. I have been sent with the sword. If they don't believe in the oneness of our God, I am here with the sword. <sighs> Come on, people. Come on, people. How about the corrupt actors, like corrupt people that have infiltrated all these religions? Like I found this to be really disturbing. I went to Catholic school, most of y'all know that, and I thought Catholic school was mostly pretty cool. Like I, I thought it was fun to pray and he had the little bench and you stand up and stay. I just liked it. I just thought it was kind of cool, all the ritualistic stuff about it. Uh, until one day, whenever, you know how little guys, you know, little kids do, you know, I'm 16 probably. And well, guys like to arm wrestle. They like to see who's toughest and, you know, they wrestle around. Well, I'm wrestling around with a bunch of buddies and we're just, you know, getting after it and, you know, not quite fighting but like really wrestling we don't see who can hold somebody down who can pick you up all you know all this all the stupid stuff boys do well our priest who runs our hallway he comes in and he wants to play with us too well this is a grown guy you know he's in his 40s we're 16 year old boys well he wants to wrestle me because i just got finished uh whooping up on my friends and well his little wanky gets hard and he starts rubbing it on my butt crack yeah, and, and I was offended by that. And whenever I was 16, I happened to be about 185 pounds. So I was, a, I was a pretty big kid, and I was super strong. And I was very, uh, I don't know if it was stupid confidence, but whatever, probably just stupid. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't offended. I didn't think this guy was fixing to rape me. It, did, it never crossed my mind that that would happen because I knew that I could overpower him easily. And so when I got up and he's right there, I whacked the hell out of him, like totally whacked the guy. And it made him silly. Like you could visually see he was silly. And I was confused, you know, like slapped him. I slapped him and I'm looking at him and I didn't know what to do as a 16 year old kid. I'm like, this guy's hard wanky is on my butt crack and he's humping me. and. I really loved him, like I respected him. I thought he was a really good guy. But I just went back to my room, let that digest, told my mom about a week later, and she said, well, son, you did the right thing. You didn't let anybody use you or abuse you. And if you were to got ex uh, expelled, that would have been fine with me. Do you want to come home? Do you want to stay there? I'm not comfortable with you there anymore. And I was fine with it. I was like, no, I don't think he's ever going to bother me again. And he didn't, and nobody ever said anything about it. There was no conversation, no higher ups, nothing. It was just over. And when I read this article, I thought it was fascinating because there were some leaked um, depositions, and we were encouraged to be with younger boys, and it was not a big deal. I find it insulting that so many beautiful, spirited, and it just it's not just with Catholics, it's with all of them. We should not tolerate lies. We should not tolerate physical abuse. We should not have a culture where they say it's okay, it wasn't a big deal to abuse kids. We just should not allow that to happen, no matter what your religion, no matter what your race, no matter where you live in the world. But people do. They just keep lying to themselves, saying it's all okay. I'm going to tell you all another personal story that's really uncomfortable. I think, well, I don't think, I know because I've experienced it firsthand. We've been made to feel really guilty. Like, you know, you better believe this certain thing or you're going to hell. 
You're going to hell, boy. I had my bishop. I went to a different school when I was younger. I was Mormon, Catholics, Baptist, and Pentecostal. Had a big, wide-ranging experience with Christianity. And the bishop asked me to come to his office, and I'm about 13, and he sits me down. I'm really nervous. And he says, Kevin, I'm just so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. He goes, um, you're at the age where you're going to start feeling physical pressure, and you're going to need to relieve it by yourself. Do you know what I'm talking about? And I'm like... Well, I just started that practice. I just discovered it on my own. And I was thinking, how is this guy uh, reading my mind? This is weird. And he goes, God is going to be very disappointed in you. You need to go home right now and pray for forgiveness and pray every day that you're not going to go to hell. And I was like, well, I was really upset. I thought God was really mad at me. I thought God was going to send me straight to hell. Um, what kind of trauma are we doing to people worldwide with this kind of crap? Because that was traumatizing. And I know a lot of people who've had a lot of trauma with this kind of stuff, and I find it disgusting. If that offends you, be offended. Now let's go on to another matter of trust. We should trust the science. We are really, can you believe it, in this country, we are not allowed to know if our food is genetically modified or not. They just debate it. They don't want them to, no, don't worry about it. We don't need to tell them. We don't need to tell the people that what you're eating is poison. You know, because, you know, the science is subtle for sure. Uh, and they just say it's okay to eat it. But then, when you look at credible scientists, real scientists that have spent their life studying these things like this guy genetically modified crops are associated with increased use of chemicals like glyphosate and we've all heard the stories of the massive lawsuits with glyphosate where it's killing people non-stop it's ruining the soil it's tearing up the whole world well, but yeah go ahead it's okay go ahead and then you got another guy like this this scientist i give it to my kids i'm confident it's fine who are you going to believe? You know, we get numb with our trusting. What do we believe? We have massive billion dollar settlements over these things. But yet we're at the same time said, oh, well, they're still good. And you don't need to know. You don't need to know. That's scary. And then you think, oh, God, you got to be kidding, Kevin. My house, my paint is poisoning me too. I can't trust going to the store to paint my house. Like, we use trust everywhere, from what we eat, where we go to church, where we do everything. Forever chemicals are in our paint. They, over years from the day you paint until the day you repaint it with a whole fresh thing of new chemicals. They leak forever chemicals out, nonstop. What are some of those health problems? Cancer, nausea, dizziness, respiratory problems. But you know, you don't need to know about those things. No, 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 no. Trust, trust, trust. Well, just so y'all know in here, I did know about this 10, 12 years ago. So all of the paint everywhere on this that is interior is forever chemical free. <laughs> y'all are welcome. And how about this one? You gotta be kidding, my car's killing me too. <laughs> sure the hell is. Are you trusting that you can go buy a new car and be happy? Like, how happy are you when you get that new car, you got the new car smell, and you're like, man, I can't wait to go see my buddy. I'm going to go show off my car. You take those deep breaths because you're all excited. The new car smell? Flamaldehyde, benzene, and other chemicals that are flowing in the air. And I like how they, in these articles, they make it seem really kind of innocent. You know, it can irritate your skin, your eyes. Oh, and cause cancer. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. You know, we have a major trust issue with everything. Everything. You just can't trust anything. How about your clothes? How about the shirts on your back? I mean, we trust it when we go to the store and we buy a new pair of underwear. You know, we're not making our skin diseased and killing us. 
But in case y'all didn't know, you have the oil business, and then you have the textiles, clothes. They are the most polluting, horrible industry on the planet. They poison more things, including each one of us, every single day. It's a $2.5 trillion industry. And guess what? You can't trust them. And why? Yoga pants and gym leggings, Lululemon, Old Navy, they all contain forever chemicals. All the big brands that you use, and especially all the crappy brands. All of them. They've all been tested and they all have these nasty things in them. And of course you've got to put it in Babies R Us. I mean, why wouldn't you do it in baby clothes? I mean, you're poisoning everybody else. You're supposed to trust that you can do that, right? Kind of gets irritating real fast and you wonder why everybody's pissed off all the time and why one out of every three people is getting cancer and everybody's stressed out, their mom's going to die. It's kind of piss you off. And it should. We should be angry. How about another lie? Women have worked really, really hard to get their own sports. Like women for decades have worked so hard to have their own sports teams. And we're supposed to believe the lie that that biological male should be playing football with that biological woman? If they want a team, go get your own team. Go make your own league. Who cares? You want to play sports? Go play sports. Go play with another biological male your size. And now all these women, you see them everywhere. They're refusing to even play. Their dreams are dashed. They've been wanting to do this since they were little girls and grow up. And now they're getting ruined because we're supposed to believe another lie. And it's frustrating. That one's just right in your face. It's horrible. Sure, believe that. I mean, we all remember this. Oh, it's safe and effective. You can trust us. Of course you can trust us. You know, Johnson & Johnson had to remove theirs shortly after uh, they had all the blood clots. I mean, it was so bad that they couldn't even cover it up, you know. And, and why wouldn't we trust these people? They're the ones that paid the massive billions of dollars of fines killing people with baby powder. Sure, <laughs> but why wouldn't we trust them? I mean, CNN and Fox told us that we should, so why wouldn't we trust them, right? Wow. It's a lot of fear mongering, a lot of spinning, and we wonder why we have our inner relationship issues, why we struggle with each other. It becomes a problem and they spin these things. There's a scandalous admission, they say, with this uh, executive from one of these big, big pharma companies. And they said the clinical trials were never intended. We never meant to have those. And if y'all haven't ever seen this, this is a fascinating thing. Apparently, we just can't handle the truth, right? This, this lady, big pharma exec, they never tested them on the transmission, preventing transmission. They were never tested. Right in front of the EU, like it's a big deal. I had to rewind this thing probably 30 times just scratching my head. And then you get the fun of going to look at, do your little internet search and see what's happening. And then you have all these fact checkers. Oh, come in. Oh, you know, it really, well, they never said that. They never really said it was safe and effective. They didn't do those things. They could try to gaslight you and make us all feel stupid. Huh, where's the trust? We need trust. If without trust, we're gonna be miserable people. We need to love each other. We need to figure out. We need to buy local. We need to know what's happening. We have to. Doing your own research is bad. Like every news media, every one of them, doing your own research is bad. <laughs> I just gotta go. I'll let you think about that and digest it on your own. Just, just that's a bad idea. Y'all remember this? I mean, everybody, all the news outlets. I'm just picking on uh, old Chris Cuomo because he was really bad at it. Talking about how bad Joe Rogan was and all these other people for saying ivermectin was a uh, horse pace and it's going to kill you. It's, uh, oh, it's bad. All you people are going to die. And uh, he leaves CNN and what does he do? He starts taking ivermectin. He starts coming out after telling you nonstop that they need to be shamed. Everybody that's not doing they're safe and effective thing. They're shameful. We need to have psychological fear porn. Just destroy them. And now he's saying to the world that he has very serious side effects from the safe and effective. 
That's strange, isn't it? And that he's taken ivermectin every time because he continues to get that thing. You know, this is nothing new. This is nothing new. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of the East India Company, but it's been ran by Britain forever. And it's still in full force and effect with all the big pharma. We have been poisoning people for hundreds of years on purpose to keep them dumb, to keep them... It's bad. It's really, really bad. So this is nothing new. This kind of crap has been going on for a long, long, long time. How about our politicians? This is really going to piss a lot of people off. Everybody says, my guy's good. He's going to save our soul. The country will be doomed if we don't have this guy. He has the best character ever. He's awesome. Uh, but, you know, sure, he didn't, he didn't go around in thousands of pitches, not just one or two, thousands of pitchers smelling little kids like it's the freakiest thing ever. It's freaky. Kissing this little boy on the mouth. There's hundreds of him trying to do that. His daughter says they had inappropriate relations. Not that guy. No way. No, no way. The fact checkers came out and said it was false. Oh, but wait. The fact checkers came out recently and said, oh, no, that was right. Because I don't know if y'all remember, the news media really tried to play it down when they said, no, that really wasn't her journal that was found. That wasn't her diary. Oh, but during depositions, it, you know, and all these things are happening, uh, she came out and said, yeah, it is mine. My dad did take inappropriate showers with me, and I was sexualized at a very early age. Why is that not just everywhere? Like, why is that not everywhere? But no, trust that guy. Trust him. I mean, what, he's probably the same as me. I'm a Democrat, so I love him. How about this guy? I mean, who doesn't think that guy's a douche? You know what I mean? Come on. He, they beat both of them. They say what your constituents want you to, what they want to hear, and they do something totally different. How about this slick guy? He was really good at killing people. He used to like to brag about it. I'm really good at killing people. Like, really? <laughs> like, what kind of psychopath walks around and tells his staffers, I'm really good at killing people? <laughs> yeah, come on now. And what about this Yahoo? Like, there's not going to be any war crimes for him. There's no weapons of mass destruction. Oh, by the way, I sent all you boys, you brave, beautiful boys and girls to die. And then we killed millions of Iraqis for nothing. Absolutely nothing. But, you know, trust, trust them. Hey, we're good. We're all good here. Nothing to see. Just keep on moving. You know, we need trust. We need trust. We need to trust our new tires are going to work. We're not going to go right down the road and they're going to blow up. Like, we need to trust that. We need to trust our food doesn't have poison in it. We need to know that our words have meaning. We need to trust that our water's not polluted, that our healthcare system's not going to be broken, that we have fair justice. If you don't have money in this world, you don't have any justice. And that's a fact. We need to trust that our kids are going to be safe in the daycare. We need to trust that our elderly parents are going to be okay in their nursing homes. We need to trust. We need to trust that our spiritual leaders or guides are doing their best and coming from a good place of intent and safety and real concern so you can grow together. Like we have to have trust. And I think we can restore trust. That's one of the reasons why I'm so dedicated to this every Sunday. If we don't have a group around us and build a group around us that we can trust and count on, we are doomed. I don't know if you're paying attention, but the United States is certainly on the fast track to a not pleasant place. Crime is through the roof. Drug addiction is through the roof. It's bad. Everything costs more. We're gonna need each other really bad. And we need each other really bad now. I just think we need to practice the art of listening, the art of communicating, the art of allowing ourselves to be inconvenient, uh, inconvenienced by others so that we can be good friends, that we can help each other. We have to learn how to trust ourselves and forgive ourselves. That's a big deal. We all screw up nonstop. So if we're not forgiving ourselves and if we don't learn how to laugh and have fun, we're screwed. Like we have to laugh. We have to love and hug and we have to practice 
knowing ourselves, we have to practice connecting to nature, connecting to others, and ultimately meditating and connecting to the divine the best way you know how. And if you're in the local area and that resonates with you, I welcome you to come out. It's warming, it's warm, inviting, and we need friends and people we can trust now more than ever. And if that means something to you, then come join us. See you next time.